Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an exponential equation. We have x to the power x cubed equals 36, and we're going to be looking for the x values. I'm going to go ahead and show you the solution method, and then we'll do a little bit of calculus, and we're also going to take a look at the graph of this function. So wouldn't it be nice if the base and the exponents were the same on the left-hand side? They aren't. The base is x, the exponent is x cubed. Can we make them the same? And that would be really nice, so we can do it. But, but to do that, this is what we need to do. We're going to go ahead and raise both sides to the third power. And this is going to give us what we need. And we're going to be using it, some of the properties of exponents. So let me go ahead and write it down. If you have something like a to the power x to the power y, then it's equivalent to a to the power xy. But notice that a to the power xy can also be written as a to the power yx, which means it can also be written as a to the power y to the power x. In other words, these exponents can also interchange. Anyways, let's go ahead and use the first property of multiplying the exponents. So this gives us x to the power 3x cubed equals 36 to the third power. And 36 can be written as 6 squared. So we can go ahead and write it as 6 to the second power to the third power, which is a good thing you'll see in a little bit. Now here we have x to the power 3x cubed. The bases and the exponents are not still the same. So our goal is to get something like this a to the power a equals b to the power b on both sides. So on the left hand side, by using again properties of exponents, we can write this as x to the power 3 to the power x cubed, because 3 and x cubed are multiplied. So basically, to keep a long story short, we switch these exponents. Make sense? Okay. After, of course, raising both sides to the third power. Now, 6 to the second to the third, that's going to give us 6 to the power 6, which is nice because the base and the exponent are the same. And it's true on both sides, so that's really cool. So 1 to 1 correspond, con correspondence tells us that, hey, x cubed equals 6 works, meaning that the cube root of 6 is a solution to this equation. We can also write it as 6 to the power 1 third. It doesn't mean there are no other solutions, it just means that we got one of the solutions to this equation. Now, next step is going to be to find the other solutions or to prove that there are no other solutions. That's why we're going to do a little bit of calculus. Let's go ahead and do that. So suppose f of x equals x to the power x cubed. And now we're going to go ahead and ln both sides. ln is natural logarithm, the base e thing. So we're going to do natural log of both sides because that's going to help us bring the exponent down. And I know some people do e to the power something. It's the same thing. ln f of x equals x cubed times ln x. And now we're going to differentiate both sides. The reason why we had to do this first is because when you have a function like g, to the g of x to the power h of x, like two different functions of x, and they're in the base and the exponent, then we don't have any rules for this. And there is a rule for it. Actually, you differentiate like an exponential function and then a po polynomial and then combine them. But that's another topic. We'll probably talk about it later. Anyways, so let's go ahead and differentiate the left-hand side using chain rule. The chain rule says for ln of a function, the derivative of the inside divided by the inside. Inside meaning f of x in this case. On the right hand side, we have the product property. And the product property is like if you have f times g, like a product of two functions, its derivative is going to be the derivative of the first function times the second function plus the derivative of the second function times the first function. When I say the first function, the original one, not the derivative. Okay? So that is the product rule, a lot of rules for differentiation, but you know, they're easy once you know them. So let's use it. Uh, the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared multiplied by the second function. And i got to make sure my dot is raised so it is multiplication. Okay? It, it's not a decimal point. And then plus the derivative of ln x, which is 1 over x, multiplied by the first function, which is x cubed. If you simplify this a little bit, uh, you're going to notice an x squared here and the x is going to disappear. Notice that x squared can be factored out. Let's go ahead and do that. And we can replace f of x with x to the power x cubed, by the way. 
and this is going to become x squared times 3 ln x plus 1. Great, now we can go ahead and multiply by x to the power x cubed on both sides, or cross multiply, x to the power x cubed times x squared times 3 ln x plus 1. Let's not combine the, the two powers for right now. We want to set this product equal to 0. We want to find the critical points where we might have a horizontal tangent where the derivative changes sign going from positive to negative or negative to positive because that kind of indicates a maximum or a minimum. Okay, and when we set this equal to 0, we get three factors. So if this can't be 0 because 0 to the power 0 is the only candidate and unfortunately 0 to the power 0 does not equal 1. Whoever says that it's equal to 1, uh, that's not true. Anyways, it can be lots of things. So, yeah, anyways, okay, that's controversial. So if you set x squared equal to 0, then you get x equals 0. Again, that's not allowed. So the only option we have left is this one. Let's go ahead and do it. 3 ln x plus 1 equals 0. ln x equals negative 1 third. Since the base is e, that indicates e, x equals e to the power negative 1 third as our critical point. So next we're going to go ahead and make a table and find out how our function behaves at that point. So we're going to make a table like this, x, f prime, and f. The critical value is e to the power negative one-third right here. That's way too close, so let's go ahead and erase this and make it again. I don't like that, so oops. Okay, e to the power negative one-third. Let's go to make our table here. So we have the x row, we have the f prime row, and then we have the f row. So here we have e to the power negative one-third, which is where the derivative changes sign. Now, does it become positive or negative to the left and to the right? How do we find out? If you look at this 3 ln x plus 1, that's the only thing that changes sign, by the way. If uh, we can use a test value, um, 0 you don't want to use. You want to use something in the domain of ln x. How about 1? If x is 1, we're going to get a positive value. So, and 1 is greater than e to the power negative 1 third, so it's going to be positive here, therefore it's going to be negative here. Which indicates that our function is going to decrease and then increase, so this is going to be a minimum at x equals e to the power negative 1 third. Let's go ahead and take a look at it on the graph. It will give us a better idea of what this looks like. And then we'll come back and finish up. All right? Okay, let's go ahead and check out the graph real quick. So here's the graph of our function on Desmos, and you can see that our actual graph has a minimum at e to the power negative one third. So notice that y equals 36 is going to be way above, it's out of bounds, and our function is always going to be increasing on that interval, therefore it's only going to intersect the horizontal line at one point, which means there's only one solution. Okay, let's go ahead and go back and finish up the solution. So we have an increasing function on that interval. So we have a single solution, and that solution for our function was what? We, did we find it? We did. It's the cube root of 6, and that is the only solution for this equation, which is x to the power x cubed equals 6. I mean 36. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Or let's say next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.